Pokemon Masters, Berkey Batobi here. Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh. Those are the regions we've explored so far, and so naturally this next part will consist of the Unova region. And the environment's very different too. We've looked at the grassy plains of Kanto, the tropical rainforests of Hoenn, and the snowy peaks of Sinnoh, but Unova is far more urban in its environment. How has Pokemon life adapted and evolved around human beings? Let's take a look at some of the earliest forms of life there. Snidaria. Of course, the Tentacool are the only Pokemon in this category of simple life. Jellicent makes for the last, being the fifth generation's version of Tentacruel and completing this segment of the tree. In the worlds of arthropods, Crustle seems to be this generation's version of Parasect or Kingler, but it is definitely closer to Kingler. Scolipede and Galvantula are just big bugs, with Galvantula being another arachnid, although again, it only has four legs, not eight, just like Aridos. Except this one has two feelers, so I guess it's a little bit more accurate. Monday spiders and tarantulas. Durant is obviously an ant, and the victim to both Trapinch and Heatmore. Both of these Pokemon like to eat Durant. Levani is some kind of mantis, with Volcarona being a mega moth. And these aren't the only Pokemon bugging me. Excavalier and Aselgore are curiosities indeed, but looking at their pre-evolutions, we can learn that Excavalier is a beetle, and Aselgore is a mollusk of some kind. It is the only mollusk of this generation, and that's all the arthropods, so further up the line we move to the rest of aquatic life. Both Stumpfisk and Electros are jawless fish, being flatfish and eels respectively, while Basculin and Alola Mola are both regular bony fish, and of course there is no way that Alola Mola isn't closely related to Love Disk. Maybe it doesn't evolve from it in the Pokemon sense of the word, but certainly in the real world they are closely related. Other water dwellers, of course, include the amphibians. And again, we see some symmetry with earlier generations, Seismitoad being this generation's Poliwrath. And if you don't believe me, just compare Time Pole and Poliwag. They're both small round tadpoles, and Poliwrath is related to Politoad, and Palpatoad is the evolution of Time Pole. There's lots of similar names there. Now, of course, the next direction life has gone is Reptilia. Scrafty joins the lizards, and Superior is, of course, a snake. Draconis come up in this generation in the form of Hydreigon, Haxorus, and Drugiodon. Although it is possible but unlikely given its rough skin that Drugiodon might actually be an offshoot of Sharpedo and Garchomp. However, apart from having the rough skin ability and somewhat similar coloration, there isn't a lot of evidence to really suggest that, so that Pokemon theory is quite weak, and I'm happy to put it with the other dragons. I guess you'll have to let me know what you think. Turtles are, of course, a thing this generation, and the inspiration for this whole series. As you'll remember, I did a video explaining how evolution works with Lapras, Squirtle, and Teotuga, or of course, in this video, we're talking about Caracosta. Caracosta being the ancestor of all turtle and tortoise life in the Pokemon world, not just Lapras and Blastoise, but also the likes of Torterra and Torkoal. This Pokemon also used to live in the time of Amistar, with a jaw that is said to be able to easily crush through Amistar shells. And adaptations like a strong jaw or big flippers or a tough shell, these are the things that have passed down to become all the other forms of turtle life. The same is true for bird Pokemon. Birds are the living ancestors of dinosaurs. I should know I'm a bird keeper after all. And it seems that the Generation 5 fossils tell a really great backstory about the history of the Pokemon world. We've talked a number of times about Caracosta, but now let's take a look at Archaeops. Based off the real world Archaeopteryx, this creature is a sort of transitional form, with just enough traits to be a reptile still, but also enough traits to be considered a bird. It's considered the first bird, and Archaeops is based off of it. It is the ancestor to all bird Pokemon. So of course it gets placed right on the first spoke of all bird life. It gave way to all other bird Pokemon, but remember, Birds actually are dinosaurs. They're just the modern day versions. And again, just like Caracosta, the other Generation 5 fossil, this Pokemon also used to eat Omastar. Little beak marks have been found in Omanite shell, according to the Pokedex. Poor Lord Helix. Braviary, Mandibuzz, Unpheasant, as well as Sigilyph and Swanat also seem to be birds. Sigilyph is, of course, the most bizarre one physiologically speaking, but may well be related to Zatu, who also appears on hieroglyphs. There is, of course, another type of reptile that is quite closely related to birds as well as other lizards, and that is crocodiles and alligators. And here we have Crocodile, my favorite Pokemon of this generation. And this Pokemon has something really cool about it. It is a cooperative hunter. 
According to the Pokedex, it hunts alongside Flygon, with Flygon whipping up giant sandstorms and Crocodile hiding within the sand that it creates. Then these two Pokemon hunt down their prey and share the bounty. Examples like this in the real world are very few and far between. But even then, it's used only within creatures of the same species. We also previously discussed that bat Pokemon like Crobat, although being mammals in our world, may be mammals like lizards evolved from Aerodactyl, placing this generation's Zubat clone, Woomat, and its evolution, Swoobat, among them. Speaking of mammalian life, starting at the tippity top, Sork and Throw are the most human-like Pokemon, being great apes. However, it is important to note that humans did not evolve from Pokemon, but you'll have to wait till the final parts to learn about that. Conkelda is also among them. Simi Porsage and Seer are all of course monkeys and they are amongst my least favorite Pokemon. Darmanitan also joins them, being based off an orangutan. Amolga is another one of the electric rodents, with Chinsino also being a rodent. Watchhog isn't too distantly related either, being a groundhog, with an element of meerkat. Speaking of cats, we look to Carnivora, where Lipard is the only actual cat this generation. This rivaling Generation 1's Persian. Betic as well is a bear, and Stoutland is a dog, with Zoroark being a dog or fox. Also closely related are the weasels, where we have Menchow, and there is also Samurott, which despite the name is not actually an otter, but is much closer to a sea lion in its final form. There are a few more mammals. Embor is a pig, like Grumpig. Sawsbuck is a deer, like Stantler. Buffalon, a bison, and of course related to Taurus and Miltank. Zibstriker is a zebra, and closely related to the horses. And Excadrill is a mole, like Dugdrio. Heatmore is an anteater, and preys of course on Durant. Anteaters are part of the same groups as Sloth, so if Slackoth was the final evolution, that would be here, but uh, no, Slacking is the final form. And that leaves just one more Generation 5 Pokemon, the Pokemon who whose name I have a lot of trouble pronouncing. Mushana, who is obviously so closely related to Hypno. This is the Generation 5 Pokemon. Both are psychic types, of course, with relations to sleep-based powers and are based off tapirs. Animals that despite their trunks are closer to horses and rhinos, not elephants. But now we can pull back and look at the whole tree of life, taking the Unova region and all of its new Pokemon and adding them with every single other. And you can see how this is all filling out now. There are only two more regions to investigate. So next up, we'll be moving on from the biggest region of new Pokemon to the region with the smallest Pokedex, Kalos. However, there are still many more Pokemon to go. The observant among you may have realized at this point that I've been missing a lot of Pokemon. Lots of plant-like Pokemon, uh, ghosts, uh, legendary Pokemon. They're all going to be covered in later parts. So stay tuned and engage with me in the comments. And as always, so high Pokemon Masters.